that feels cool familiar. See, yeah, pretty cool to see what it was, and then what everyone's doing, like this, the decor, yeah. the themes, the I know. You know all the different concepts. You can click and find like any podcast, anything you're interested yeah. in. There's one. Exactly. There's too many now. I'm like, everyone, get out. Come on, I'm trying to you grow. You say that, but you know what? <laughs> I don't think it's oversaturated. I think yeah. that you guys, just like everybody else, will speak and tell stories and have these ideas that that specifically speak in other people are looking for whereas like somebody else that might be doing something similar yeah it's just not the same message or it's not the same storyline so i don't i don't think it is oversaturated i hope not yeah. we've been doing this about four years and i feel like i've watched every one of like our friend podcasts like people were close with and stuff just like blow the hell up left and right i'm like it takes a second though like, yeah it, it takes one video it takes one story where somebody sees it and they're like oh man i didn't know you guys existed yeah. like i you know we've gotten a few of those yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it it takes it takes time and it takes just the right right person, right video, right story. Yeah. Plus, we're in Alaska. It's a little little bit harder to network. It's the internet, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To uh, like a lot of those places have, or a lot of the other ones have access to things we don't have access to up here, like some of the guests and stuff like that. That's true. Yeah. It's yeah. You're stuck with what letter would I be like? You're How on. far down the line? G G rated? No, you were on one of the. T you're on. That was one of the top rated <laughs> reality TV shows. That is true. That is true. As far as we're concerned, you're a list here. Hey, yeah, we were, I'm Alaska a lister. Yeah, we're, we're aiming it's for me Pat and Marty Sajak. Rainey. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! There you go. Yeah, you, that name sounds seen? vaguely familiar. It does. He's got a Homestead Rescue, and when he yeah. first started, he wore this cute little like neckerchief thing and uh this button-up shirt and it was like maybe one button down and then as the series has progressed <laughs> you'll see him around town and one button has slowly come undone yeah. and his chest hair like he'll fluff it out a little and now he'll walk around town and i shit you not it's like <laughs> one button at the bottom yeah and it's like nipples free belly button out and i'm thinking to myself wow if, if i started dressing like marty rainey <laughs> I might have a couple more followers. There you go. That's yeah. true. Unfortunately, <laughs> Christian and I don't really have that calling. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe We're not, you do. You don't know. You're like, all right, ladies, <laughs> that's, it's that's time. Oh, problem. God. It's about, it's about to get warm. Yeah. And I'm gonna, yeah. Yeah. I need uh -oh. to get me some button-up shirts yeah. before. Start just, filming the podcast and wearing the button downs. Yeah. I'll be like, <laughs> Morgan told us to do this to get famous. No, Marty Rainey taught us. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. Yeah, we have to have a leader. Yeah. Every cult has a leader. Every cult has a leader. It's soon daddy's time now. Oh my gosh. Oh. oh yeah, he'll throw in some buttons too. Yeah, I've made a nonsensical soundboard I with love it. Um, mostly things <clears throat> that he said over the years that I can use against him just in like little increments, you know? It's an art form that I don't think Actually, you know what? There's a lot of people that appreciate it. At what point did you ever say that? That oh, that was me. That one was, that one was oh. me. I have like 3 <laughs> of me. But I okay. have some much worse stuff, I am, I promise you. It gets pretty racist. It's he's in some trouble, yeah. Always biggest racist ever. It's hilarious, dude. Yeah. No, it's just me. Unless he's driving. Yeah. I've been in therapy for the last year and I found that I have anger issues. And Christian has given me the opportunity to, to be an outlet where I'm like, I have to put this on you. No, it's I don't have. Yeah, I don't yeah. have anger issues. So he mm -hmm. takes advantage of me. Yeah. Really just cushions the blow. He's like, yeah, more, please. Yeah, it gets pretty weird in here. But, you know, that's that's fine. People need to hear that. After our freaky deaky stuff. Well, that's in the plans. It is actually, yeah. I've got some weird stories for that. I'm like, people aren't ready. We have people, like, some of our listeners want more stuff, hard to find all the time. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to need to get a crew eventually to help help run our that stuff. That would be nice. Yeah. When the money starts rolling in. All right. You ready? I believe so. We'll see how strong that is. I might have taken one or too many hits. So if I don't make sense, not a word from you. Just be like, hey, Scott, that didn't really make sense. I'll be like, I actually did not hit any today. You're out of your mind, really? I don't. Maybe one like hit on the vape earlier. But, mm, yeah, but I was at work the all truth day. Comes out. I was at work all day. Yeah, and I didn't want to make a fool of myself in front of our guest. I have no problem making a fool of myself <laughs> in front of our guest. I do it every week, a Christian. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but no, I just knew I had to read a lot. So, mm. okay, I'm gonna try attempt to do this. Mm. Okay, a peek behind the curtain, if you will. I make this show sound beautiful, Christian. I just want you to know. You do. All right. N nearly everyone. Every Off to a banging <laughs> start, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Every got time. in your head already, man. Already. That was two words in. Yeah, dude. It sounded like, um, you know, when like a 15 year old boy. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what it felt please. like. <laughs> Found it. Yeah. And I, what's sad is I prepared my voice and that's what came out. 
And I'm like, crap. No judgment. Yes, yeah. so my question, if you did, prepare your voice. Okay. Nearly everyone is familiar with the myths and legends of those who have become known as the little people. I feel like we should put that in quotes, but found in old and modern tales around the world, they are given names like fairies, minihuni, elves, along with many lesser known names specific to the regions they are found. On today's episode, we'll spend some time discussing Alaska's mythic little people and maybe even compare similar entities found in other parts of the world. You are now entering the realm of the Freaky Deaky, an unsuspecting stop at the crossroads of fantasy and reality, where the frayed edges of make-believe seep into this cookie-cutter, white picket world you've been led to believe is far from extraordinary. What you're about to hear are true stories. <clears throat> Alleged true stories. Christian, just... <sighs> okay. Tales of the strange and inexplicable thought only to exist in film and folklore. Although difficult to accept, we do not know everything about this reality, about time or space, what lies beneath the ocean's depths. And try though we might, the unchanging truth remains. There are some things we legitimately cannot explain logically. I actually feel very apprehensive about even saying little people because last time we did that youtube lit us on fire like literally every comment was like how dare you i'm like it's not those little people it's like talking about little people in the woods of wisconsin they're like what I'm like, oh. i know when you put the the thumbnail up you better have quotes on little people we'll see it depends on the character count really if i'm close to 100 i gotta risk it okay fair enough oh shit yeah welcome back to the freaky deaky to everyone except for you ellen you're on spotify somewhere I have a hater. I, I found it a couple days ago. God. That's how you know you're moving on up, though. That's what I that's, tell him. That's a that, good sign. The one, that was the one thing in my head. I'm like, mm, at least I finally, I felt bad for Christian. I was like, all these people making fun of him constantly, and nobody is harping on me. Oh, floodgates just opened. So, yeah. but yeah, Ellen, go f yourself. No, I'll bleep that out. It's, <laughs> it's fine. Um, he doesn't like that. He has a harder time with that stuff than I do. I'm like, no, she literally attacked me for defending my religion. Whenever you'd say something against Christianity, if I like fought back, I'm like, it's not that. Then she's like, why would he do that? I'm like, I don't know, because I believe it. Is that fine? Yeah. But she sounds like one of your ilk, so. I don't attack your religion. Oh, you just make Sorry, it sound Ellen, like it's already starting. No, it's cool. But seriously, <laughs> Ellen, get out of here for real. I hope you're still not listening. Someone is, there's, never mind. It's not for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, man, one or two too many, but it's cool. If uh, Ellen's listening, obviously she's listening to hear my voice, not yours. I know, which is really weird, but I gotta, I'll, I'll let it slide every once in a while. I need a fan. Christian, you do have a soothing voice. Oh, nice. It's trusting. Puts everyone Thank asleep. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used yeah. to people being nice to me yeah, on the podcast. It's going to be a weird mix. <laughs> it's going to be a really weird mix this episode. Usually leave with like kind of slumped shoulders and just like, it's fine, honestly. No. Anyway, uh, yeah, we are on the show now. And everybody's like, what was, whose know, voice was like, that? Welcome to the show, Morgan. Hi. So I'm Morgan Lauren. I don't know what, what do I say? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, that's better than us so far. So yeah. yeah, you heard how Christian started is, you know, like that's, that's about it. Yeah. So I stay young. You could have gone that route. Yeah. yeah. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. You're very welcome. Yes, thank you for showing up. I don't know if that's the right way to say. It. <laughs> yeah, oftentimes we invite people on the show and they just don't even bother. They're like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Oh, I forgot to send out those invitations. I'm just going to admit that now. That's that why they didn't out. show up. Mm. All the crying I did when they didn't show up was fake just to make yeah. me feel better. Thank you. I appreciate that, honestly. I don't even know what to ask you. Damn, see, we really yeah. should have planned this a lot better, but it's fine, honestly. Yeah. So we should probably introduce Morgan a little bit. Yeah. Well, I'm not great at that. I'm yeah. That's okay. I've known Morgan for a while now. We work together on the slope, which for those of you guys that aren't in Alaska is way up on the northern edge of Alaska mm -hmm. where it's really cold and nobody lives there. They just get oil and they other things exist. from. Yeah, but that's actually where part of these folklore start from is actually in the Brooks Range, which True. Um, the Prudhoe Bay where we worked is only another maybe 100 miles north of that. And so the tales up there are widespread. I've actually heard of the little people in the Brooks quite a bit. And when I went down, so you go down the Dalton Highway, which follows the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, I'd actually heard tales when I worked at Flow Station 5 and 6 and in that area. And they would say, yeah, you're welcome to go out and play after hours, but... You know, you know about the bears, you know about the wolves, but have you heard about the little people of Brooks? And at first it was like, ha ha, like, you know, yeah. what have you? Mm. 
But then I went home and I was telling my parents about how funny it was that these people were trying to convince me that there's like elves or dwarves or whatever you want to call them. And my family, who's born and raised in Alaska, I'm a multi-generation um, Alaskan. And my grandpa, who, who's my mom's stepmom or stepdad, excuse me, but um, is uh, Alaska native. He said, no, these the folklore is, is only that if you believe it to be fake, but it's real. Yeah. There's multiple accounts across all of Alaska of these people going missing or seeing them or having weird things happen from the little people. Yeah. So I I don't know, it put enough of like hearing his stories and hearing my family's stories, put enough of a belief in me that I never went outside the gates of the, the flow stations. That makes sense. <laughs> and just as a disclaimer, when we talk little people, we're talking maybe a type of cryptid uh, lost human, similar to Bigfoot. We're not talking. We're, we're not, not talking TLC or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. The band or the singing group both, TLC. Actually, yeah. yeah. It turns out we're not talking about both. Yeah. <laughs> we we ain't talking about any scrubs in here. I don't see any scrubs in Chasing here. Chasing so. waterfalls. Yeah. <laughs> that I am known to do though. So <laughs> can't shut that off. Another thing before we move move on to the little people, you were recently on a television show. Yeah. So um, I was lucky enough to spend the season out in Kino, Yukon. It is in Canada, about three hours east of Dawson City, and um, I was on the show Gold Rush, and as it very much sounds, I was mining for gold. So really, really fun experience, and yeah, it's been interesting watching the season unravel and getting to watch all of the work that we did and to make it home with a little bit of gold in my pocket. And now, were you mining before you went on that show? Nothing professionally, but okay. I did grow up in Alaska and growing up in Alaska, it is not uncommon to have someone, whether it's a family member or at least just a close friend yeah. that is in, you know, interested in prospecting. And I grew up with a family of multi-generation prospectors. And, you know, I remember being a little kid and being gifted like a little gold nugget for your birthday. Oh, and nice. when I was little, it was like, oh, cool. Thanks. You know, and you toss it over in the yeah. side of your room and never see it again. Now you're like and six grand. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm like counting back all of this. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? Yeah. So definitely grew up prospecting, panning, doing all the fun stuff. Yeah. Now let me ask you this and I apologize in advance and please don't judge me for this. How many times have people made the joke, would you consider yourself a gold digger? All day, every day. I knew it. Yes. That's why and I didn't start with that. That's whole, it. Wholeheartedly. Mm. I will happily tell people, especially if they don't know who I am. Yeah. I will tell people like they'll ask what I do. I'm like, oh, I'm a gold digger and mm. I won't explain further. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there's like, oh no, I'll watch out for your boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Either okay. they love it or hate it. I figured I felt an energy saying she's heard this way too many times. Yeah. And I'm like, I got to go for it. I feel like I have to go for mm -hmm. it. It's a thing. I think it'll stay with me forever, too. Yeah. So I work with the Jolene. So we sing Jolene to her a lot. Undoubtedly. You have to. There's yeah. just certain things that you have to do. And don't feel bad. I, too, am also a gold digger. So God it's bless. fine. It's fine. Honestly. Yeah. You don't look for gold. Your daughter is the yeah, gold. Yeah, your daughter is the gold. Oh, Christian. good save. Too bad yeah. she doesn't listen to the podcast. That you might have bad. to clip that part. Brownie points across the board, though, probably, right? Yeah. Bring and it up the next argument and be like, ah, da, da, da. <laughs> this is what you I need actually to listen to think this about episode. you. Yeah. <laughs> you need to go to this timestamp on this episode right here before you say anything else. Just talk to the editor. He'll give you a clip. I do. Yeah. I'll just cut it out. <laughs> Scott, get that. Get that. One thing I know we were talking about it the other day, but you have plans for a, a future show that you're going to do on your own. Yeah, I'm so excited. This summer, I'm going independently from the network and I'm filming a YouTube series and it's going to be under the user Morgan Lauren Co. It I'm slotted for about 12 episodes right now and it is going to be everything that is like real Alaska. Because if mm. you watch any of the reality shows about Alaska, yeah. oh my gosh, they are hard to watch. <laughs> They're drama and a lot of fakeness and majority of them are filmed in like Washington or Oregon. Like yeah. it's not even true to mm. us. So it'll be super adventure based, lots of real cool things that my friends and I go out and do on our own that maybe people, especially in the lower 48, but out of country never get to experience or yeah. maybe just are less common. And lots of prospecting there's going to be quite a bit of gold and different ways on how we collect the gold how we find it what we look for so it'll be educational to anybody that is interested in it yeah but i'm i'm very excited just for the my summer is so jet packed right now there's yeah. gonna be the jet boating and bush planes and everything else so just non-stop yeah. non-stop fun yeah i'm really excited about it 
She's going to find some haunted places, some Bigfoot. Yeah. Well, I mean, you go out in the woods and that's, you have to consider these things. I mean, Mm -hmm. we're looking out for bears and everything else and creepy people in the woods. But then the tales, no matter how much, if I actually believe it or not, Mm -hmm. there's something in the back of my mind that goes, why have they been so prevalent? Why has these Mm -hmm. stories continuously come up throughout the nations, around the world, over time, the same stories, so similar that it really makes you wonder like, okay, Mm -hmm. am I crazy? or you know christian doesn't it make you wonder it really does well it makes on, me wonder on this kind of stuff it does bigfoot oh, okay. little people because old tales that have been around since we started paying attention to what people were talking about they're still around people are still seeing things i mean when i was looking up little people i could have made three or four episodes so i just toned it down a little bit yeah because they're all every society has every, little people especially if you look along the arctic circle uh, around the world, all of the Scandinavian countries, right. mm-hmm. the the Russia, uh, Russia, Alaska, all the way around Canada, everywhere has the exact same description of these people. And they're not like, they're not dwarves. They're called little people for a reason. They're not dwarves. They're not elves. They are like, if you took a, a man and just micro-sized him, mm-hmm. so limb size and everything yeah. is proportionate. Yeah. And all the way around the world, around the Arctic Circle, they all have this same exact like clothing description. It's just odd. It you doesn't know? make any sense. It You're absolutely make, right. Yeah. yeah. It, it's just very strange. Mm-hmm. Well, I do have a part here at the beginning that might help make a little bit of sense. Well, there you go. That's a great place to start, Christian. Yes. In the beginning. Mm. So I just want to point out that in recent years, there was a discovery of Homo floresiensis. And I'm pro- we're going to probably say some names wrong here. Heads As up. is tradition. Yes. So they're part of the LBGT. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I was like, there's just enough of a gap between homo and the rest of it. I was like, mm. that's that's basically. They're gay little elves. <laughs> yeah. They're, well, bi- works, they're bipedal humanoids, basically. Just say that, man. <laughs> just, just say that. Okay, sometimes they're called hobbits. That's what this species was co- is sometimes called. A little Tolkien in nature, but all right. I mean, they're about the size of hobbits is what they're saying. The gotcha. fossils found date to about 100,000 to 60,000 years ago, and the fossils were found on the island of Flores in Indonesia. They stood about three foot six inches tall, tiny heads, large teeth for their size, and they hunted small elephants and large rodents while avoiding giant Komodo dragons. And they might have even used fire. Were they giant Komodo dragons or were they... Normal size, normal size so you know, no, I think they were bigger than the ones we have now. Gotcha. So gotcha. the elephants were pygmy elephants. So that that's why they say small elephants. Hmm. So basically little people existed in history. So it's not a far stretch to imagine that there might be a remnant of these, these people still around, yeah. even if it's, it's a small one, small. small. Yeah. Ah. And the idea to my understanding was that these people now live in caves and they linger in places in the north, specifically ice caves. Right. And about a hundred to sixty thousand years ago is when we had the mass glaciers come across the world and everything glaciated over. We lost, you know, we had mass extinction, what have you. The tale tells that these guys went underground and that's how they stayed alive and stayed right. warm. Hmm. Which you see also some Native American s- stories, they talk about living underground for mm-hmm. a long period of time yeah. and then coming out. Yep. There's some massive caves all around Juneau, Southeast Alaska area, Prince of Wales. There's these cave systems that there are markings inside where the Native Alaskans did at one point live or at least spend a good majority of their time, especially mm. in the wintertime, in these caves. Right. And as you go north towards Prudhoe Bay up in the Brooks Range, it is mass cave systems all through that area so it all just kind of ties together for the theories yeah that's pretty fascinating i admittedly do not know i've heard stories of them but i don't know any of the lore behind it i don't know any of that stuff so i'm just the funny thing about that this this topic is when i reached out to you like do you do you have a topic you want to discuss and you said little people and Mm. scott and i have been talking about doing an episode on this for a while and i'm like perfect What, what christian first said was that he responded it's not that kind of show (laughs) <laughs> and then well the freaky yeah. deaky yeah. Like, are too. you sure it's yeah. not yeah, it feels like it might be yeah actually yeah. i told somebody i was doing the freaky deaky podcast and they're like <laughs> um you know your parents like pay attention to your social media mm. and stuff yeah, like, you're like, oh, <laughs> I was oh. like are you kidding me 
that's my biggest theory on why it hasn't blown up. I'm like, it's got to be shadow banned by that name alone. Yeah, but you would yeah. also think that people would accidentally find you. That's kind of the weirdest people, right? The right people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they haven't reached out to us yet if they have. Mm. You guys are a little freaky. Yeah, we're hosting a slumber party. Yeah. <laughs> Come check out the uh, garage. <laughs> that's after dark, actually. After that's, dark. Yeah, that's what we've been planning. I'm going to try to... I'm going to attempt to do a story here or a couple stories. You psych yourself out. That's what it is. Like, you should just be like confident with it. Like, this is the story. Here we go. No, I have to pronounce a name in here. Oh. So this one comes from TBM KMJR is the pronounce username. That. Yeah. And basically this person's going to tell us a little bit about little people in particular. And here I go to try to say the name. Urchin Hawk. Are you just going to breeze over a little bit about little people, dude? What? He said, I'm here to tell you a little bit about little people. <laughs> and then you just went on like you didn't say that. <laughs> That's sorry. Keep I didn't it. even realize I said that. So, so did you hear how I pronounced that? I didn't. I was too concerned with the other part. I figured as much. Mm. Urchin hawk, which is totally wrong, but close. Can you say it's slower? Urchin hawk. Okay. All right. I don't know. It's spelled. I'm not going to spell it. Yeah. You'll see it. Fine. We it, believe you. Yeah. It'll yeah. be in the description. <clears throat> but basically, the guy that wrote this says it. You pick mythical little folk. And they're said to exist since the beginning of time. Urchin hawk are also claimed to be semi-demons due to the fact that they shapeshift and surf be both the human and the underworld. Is my boyfriend a demon? <laughs> We've talked about this before. <laughs> All of mine have been. So that's what <laughs> I hear. Yeah. Is, yes. <laughs> yes. Check it's out. 10 for 10. That I'm is sorry, a much out. better response than I ever give. <laughs> yeah, you should try that one next time. <laughs> Might give the wrong impression. Precisely, yes. Yeah. Many people have seen them or unknowingly seen them as animals, birds, or even objects when they chose not to visibly be seen. Many of you, no matter your culture and traditions, have heard of them, which is why we're talking about it. This guy's seen them from afar, but others have seen them up close and in detail. These beings... Were you waiting for it? You yeah. want me to punch it in? No, I didn't want you to. Okay. But... I was giving you the benefit of the doubt. I was like, yeah, okay. I'll let this one be. These beans. Yeah. <laughs> They're beans. Yeah. One Constant big can light. of beans. <laughs> oh, you already picked up on it. Thanks mm -hmm. a lot. Thanks yeah. a lot. The bean man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't start with that, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> These beans are also known to jump through walls and manifest in homes. So watch out, Scott. Mm. Can't have that. A person I know mentioned just that. A little old wrinkled woman dressed in dirty fur clothing jumped into her bedroom and walked through into the living room and vanished. Another time, a little old man, no more than two feet tall, also jumped into the, to a woman's home and leapt out on the opposite wall in a matter of seconds. If other cultures have told of them worldwide and there is some truth to their existence, it seems they are careful when they allow themselves to be seen. It is said some are evil and deceptive and other wee folk, his words, not mine. Disclaimer, yeah. Other wee folk are helpful to human. Overall, regardless what they are and what they are capable of, they must be respected. Never take your chances to taunt or try to harm them. They will always get the best of you, for they have the power of the darkness at their beck and call. Makes them sound a little bum, bit bum, more. Bum. Yeah, oh my, that was pretty ominous at the end there. Yeah, yeah a little bit more sinister, but. Yeah, and all of the tales that I've been told have been more curious, yeah, helpful, or just kind of mischievous, but in like a fun not quite whimsical, like yeah. a but, trickster sort of yeah, way. Yeah, like a super trickster. Um, and even as far as like the people going missing, because that is part of the folklore, is that if you are out and about in the mountains, near their cave openings or what have you, that they'll snatch you up and sometimes they return you. Sometimes you're never found again, mm. but none of it seems to be done maliciously. So right. I like to think that they're more fun little curious old men running around in the woods. Than... Yeah, but if you piss them off, <clears throat> yes, you might get, get the darkness part of it. Here comes the darkness, yeah. Kind of that. Well, I got a sort of a dark story, not totally dark, but it checks out. Yeah, that's what you're pretty much known bum, for bum, around bum. here. I titled it "One Child Returned." Wow. So two went. Right. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Leave it alone. Two Just little leave it alone. Or two children, <laughs> one little people. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Another TLC Hi. show coming out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This story was posted on <clears throat> the state's Daily News Network but it was deleted later. And this is the guy's own words, which he shared in a Facebook group. I don't know his name. I couldn't find it. Some years back, I decided to hunt geese. Early May, 
in 2008. The weather was great and the birds were flying. After work, I trekked over land on the tundra passing Pilcher Mountain over into the lakes and marshes by snow machine. There was very little snow due to the warm weather. After packing snacks, I headed out alone. Upon arrival to my hunting area, I noticed a fellow hunter and decided to build a hunting blind not far from it. Hours passed and the wind was picking up, which drove the waterfowl to fly higher. It was nearly 10 o'clock in the evening and my hunting buddy decided to head home. On a hunch, I hopped to stay and set up a hunting blind on the upper end of the marsh. For that, I counted about eight or more snow machines passing through. There was a lot of open water and conditions were dangerous. After reaching my destination, I set up a hunting spot in the clearing. As the birds began to arrive, I was excited and looking forward to going home with a few fat geese. As I crouched down to aim at a descending flock, my peripheral vision on my left eye locked on a small dark object about 150 yards out. Upon glancing, I saw a small boy out on the marsh looking at me. Thinking I was seeing things, I looked away and looked back. He was still there. Surprised because he had appeared out of nowhere, I went out to greet the kid. I asked him a lot of questions. He did not answer. The boy appeared dazed, disoriented, and afraid. He had on a hoodie, a thin jacket, and tennis shoes. But he was dry, yet there was water all around him. Thinking his ride had fallen through at the other end of the portage, I used stern language to get his attention. All, he would, all he'd say was, I don't know. By then I was upset thinking whoever brought him may have drowned and he's not telling me anything. Then he stated he was alone after having him swear the truth. He asked me to take him home. I offered him candy, a soft drink, or food. He refused. I found that odd, a seven, seven or eight year old refusing goodies. Shortly we headed homeward over the hill and down the valley toward Marshall. Nearing Marshall, he asked that I drop him off at his grandmother's versus his parents. And I even ex escorted him to her home. When I told the grandmother where I found him, her jaw dropped. She mentioned seeing him several hours before and thanked me. It wasn't until the next day that I learned what had actually happened to him. The boy had been abducted by the little folk, lured away from the village and tricked into their custody. Inside the mountain, he saw thousands of little people speaking English, Yupik, and a language he'd never heard before. There were many tunnels and glowing rocks for lighting. According to the kid, he saw a little girl, a captive, who was closely guarded. After being questioned, they showed him three tunnels. He chose one and exited behind the mountain, alone back into the human realm. What seemed like a few minutes was about four hours. He told his family when he saw me, he wasn't sure if I was human and was terrified of me. That explains why he was so pale and his unwillingness to speak to me or answer my questions. I often wondered if the little people intentionally put him where I found him, or if it was mere coincidence. Of all the hunters passing by, no one else saw him. That fact had baffled me for a while. What had happened was a paranormal encounter, something out of the ordinary. The little people who are elders often told us had taken this child and released him. I believe he is lucky. Some taken are often kept. So what's super interesting and immediately makes me go huh about that is in 2005 a little girl from Palmer um, up near Lazy Mountain the mom says she looked out her window saw what was in her full best description she says she saw with her own eyes a little man miniature no taller than three foot tall running along the backyard she went outside to see what it was and her daughter was gone and they've had full investigation multiple wow. years never ever found her not a hint of anything no foul play no blood in the backyard no animals no bones nothing and the girl has never been seen again that one's always been one where they like accused it and the the elders of the community even said oh it's probably little people yeah. and i've never heard that tale before but it immediately goes huh well yeah. a little girl did go missing that's yeah. a fact. And I have heard that story about that little girl. I think it would think one of the That's wild. I think a reality show that came up here talking about Alaska monsters or something talked about it. Mm -hmm. So I've heard and I remember now that you said that that it was people some people suspected it was yeah. little people. Well, and the the tale goes for them just as that that sometimes people are released and the people that are released say that there's no rhyme or reason for why, but just some people have the opportunity to leave and yeah. some don't. I can't even imagine that. That would be terrifying. 
Yeah, and you'll see mm-hmm. in the story too, or as we go through some other stories, there, sometimes there's like the time they spend with the little people isn't that long. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden it's like a year later in some cases Yeah, when they show up again. Yeah, makes makes you go, hmm, makes you wonder. Yep, I believe. I know you believe. It doesn't take much. Yeah, I'm just like, what was that? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> makes or, sense. There's another type of little person or a name for them up here, the Anukins. And I think they're basic. They might be either similar or the same thing, just in different areas. They'll call them different. I, I different. believe that, yeah, from the Inuit to the Athabascans to just wherever you are in the state of Alaska, because for those that don't know, Alaska is massive. Yeah. It is absolutely massive from southeast all the way up and then down the Aleutian, which the Aleutian chain has also had very similar stories. Um, they all have a word for it in their native Alaska language that means quite literally small person. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of fun having somebody that knows so much about Alaska. I know. I was thinking about replacing you immediately. I'm like, you're in. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So I have some information in this one. I, we've used this source before, Hmm. um, Alaska paranormal form. And I think I even used this writer, Jesse Desmond. Isn't she the Alaska UFOs Facebook group? I think admin. I feel like that might be true. Correct. We own it's only facts. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. correct. Is it? We're not. Well, yeah, we don't need to. <laughs> you got to oh, believe. You got to believe in your heart. Yep. Nice. I'm it's right. Out. I did it. Or you're right. We're right. As per usual around here, you know. Yeah. It says here, I found these thoughts from an old thread by someone called Magic Image. He signed himself from Point Hope, Alaska. And he says, Anukins, they are the little people that live underground in the Arctic. Some of what I'm about to tell you will seem preposterous. But just ask any person that lives in any village from Nome clear up to Barrow. And all of the villages of the entire North Slope region will tell you that what I'm about to try to and explain is true, which is similar to what you just said. This is no legend or folklore. New sightings are prevalent and constant each and every year. Let's start at the beginning. So you have a better understanding of what is going on up here where frequent reports abound in each and every village. This is a vast area we're talking about in square miles, roughly the size of all the New England states put together, empty. A long time before the whaling companies arrived, the Igna Galarax lived among the people of Point Hope, AK. Nailed it. Or po- Point Hope, Alaska. I don't know why I said AK. Wow. So I'm assuming this is just another name for the little people. Yeah. So this is going to be on the Aleutian chain. Oh. Yeah. Is that where Point Hope is? I believe so, but now I'm kind of questioning myself. <laughs> just I've heard of it. it. I just never believe it. We're going to say West Coast. I'm Googling. I feel like that is all on of the Alaska. slope. Is it on the slope? Oh, was I that far off? The Northern Aleutian chain. Yeah, the, the <laughs> Northern Aleutians. Yeah, the lesser talked about one for sure. But it's Point Hope, Alaska. Yeah, it's up in the it's a North Slope borough. Ignore me. I was wrong. You can just say it again. And I could splice that. And... Oh yeah, Point Hope. That's <laughs> yeah. up in Prudhoe, near Prudhoe. Is that in the north? That's, <laughs> yeah, that's... that's up on the north slope. Yeah. That's exactly where majority of our conversations have been about. Yes, we're up in Point Hope anyway. One of their young was eaten by a dog. And they moved out of the village. Wow. These Inukin people are small, three to four feet in height. And I think we've talked about this that story on the pod before. But the dog I, one? I think we brought it up on another episode that didn't have to do with little people and we mentioned this he also says they live in the old ways to this very day they're dressed in caribou skins they still hunt with bow and arrow they live underground and in the caves all throughout this vast area they possess superhuman qualities that you will never believe they're incredibly strong and they can run very fast they sneak around the villages stealing food and when any hunter shoots and kills a caribou it requires two adult nupiak men to lift the caribou to place on a sled it only takes one of the Anukins to pick it up and run with it over his head. Bush pilots have reported seeing caribou moving quickly in a horizontal position in the past. So that's quite the trick. Yeah. So I don't know, man. He sounds pretty convinced. Yeah. And then she goes on with another story. And I, and I think this one we mentioned here, too. Oh, no, this is just going to go in a little bit deeper into the dog story with the that I just mentioned. Hmm. One time a long time ago, little man, little wife, and little boy visited a neighboring Inuit family. Little boy was so small he wore a caribou ear for a parka. Little boy wandered too close to a husky dog that was tied up nearby and was pounced on and eaten. 
Little man grabbed the husky and ripped him apart with his bare hands. After that, all the little people moved away from the village and lived underground. They became very shy to be seen by humans. Wow. Yeah. So. And and I've heard that, that if uh, you are in the woods and you are traveling alone to bring a dog because they're, they, they stay. steer clear of dogs. Mm-hmm. Like, um, like the Terminators. Mm-hmm. Just like the Terminators. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the other thing that is interesting is every tale that I've ever heard of has to do specifically with caribou. Really? And um, that is the one thing around the world. If you look it up anywhere along the Arctic Circle and even the tales down to um, southern parts of Alaska, so the Aleutian and then southeast, all of them are described as wearing caribou furs, specifically for pants. But anytime that you're hunting or eating caribou meat they're said to be little tricksters and go out and get it so i don't know if that's like their main source Hmm. of food or why that is so another story (laughs) is a, a man wearing a parka that was a patchwork of many different skins was taken down into the home of an insura i don't even know how to say the name again you know what i mean person hot there we go i think that's it they wanted to know about each skin where he had caught this one what about this one and this one The man said each time that was his father's catch or his grandfather's or his uncle's or his cousin's or his brother's catch or another relative's. So the Ursinha thought that he had many helpers. So they decided not to keep him, but to let him go because he had so many helpers who would be looking for him. And they were afraid of the helpers. So to let him go, he would have to go out one of three doors. The door in the middle would let him out. The lower one, he would be too low. And the top one, he would be too high. Some of the person hot urged him to go out the top or the bottom door, but one of the elders said not to mess with him, but to let him go through the middle. So he went out the middle door and came back into our world, and he had been gone for more than a year. Hmm, okay, and that's very similar to the one where the little boy said "Yeah, there was the three cave openings. Which I trust adults to lie and embellish and make up stories. Kids are a little bit, they don't necessarily have that devious streak hopefully in most yeah. cases in most cases yeah like the one kid that uh disappeared out this was in the lower 48 but he disappeared for like a day or two in freezing temperatures and he said a bear mm. had rescued him and kept him warm and guided him back to to all the, the searchers so and he survived two nights i think out in the wilderness i think i mean you never know was it a bear or was it a big, a big hairy man yeah mm-hmm. um yeah but you you hear stuff like that, but also how about that little boy that fell in the zoo with the, uh, the gorilla. with the gorilla where any adult, that gorilla mm. probably would have killed him immediately. Yeah. And had you have not seen it and the little boy said, no, he nurtured me. He was trying to take care of me because I fell off the, w- the wall. Yeah. You know, our minds immediately go, that's not what animals do. Yeah. But that is what mm. happened. And, and it's still unfi- murdered him. Mm. The gorilla. Not yeah. The boy. <laughs> yeah. Get <laughs> out of here, kid. No, no. I didn't know they murdered him. Thanks for bringing me down. Oh, wow. it was like a collective. It was probably the last time since Joe Exotic that the United States all came together on one joint issue and had the same exact opinion that it was absolutely horrible and that there was no rhyme or reason for the zookeepers to have done it because the gorilla was trying to take care of the little boy. And it was his fault. He mm-hmm. climbed yeah. over and the parents weren't watching. So are we talking about Harambe? We are. Yes. I thought Harambe was somebody different. So did somebody, somebody. It was a gorilla. Yeah, it was a gorilla. I uh, mean, I knew it was a gorilla. It was murdered in cold blood. It's yeah, also. When you said everyone came together collectively. I'm like, the last gorilla I know that everyone came together collectively yeah. for, my man Harambe. Yeah. Have you heard Absolutely. of Le- Lemon Harambe? Lemon Harambe? It's a weed strain. Okay. I think that's the right one. But no, it, there, Christian, I can't there is a, It's a big tribute <laughs> yeah. to the sour situation. Sm- light one up for Harambe. Yeah. yeah. That's what the bros do. I believe it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. You ready for another story? I don't know how much time we're going on. So you have to, I have a bunch of stories, so not all of them are going to fit. Yeah. I don't, I don't mind if it's a little extra. Like the good ones. Yeah. It's not going to be four hours. I promise you. We keep it around an hour. Yeah. Speaking. You know what I like is that there's no windows in here. You guys could tell me that it's been 10 minutes and I have nothing. No reference. That's how we get them. I'm locked in (laughs) here now. This is a please. Somebody help. Yeah. Me. <laughs> well, we're going to let you know right now. We're really just little people. <laughs> yeah, in big people form. <laughs> two, two guys in a oh, coat. Oh, we've been trying to get you here, Maureen. <laughs> yeah. You know too much, damn it. Yeah. 
<laughs> You're going to have to wait till next summer to do your YouTube stuff. That's right. All right. This one is spit in your hand. Okay. Great start, Christian. Thank you. And the name is great too. Erpy derp fife fofi. And I said that correctly on the first try. Wow. And it rhymes. Isn't that great? <laughs> <It all rhymes. laughs> that was all their work. My family is from Northwest Alaska, where there is a rich history of amazing true stories of survival, supernatural tales of all types, including stories of miniature traditional Alaskan natives who live in little sod houses in the tundra, living like centuries old Inupiaq. They are somewhat magical and very hard to spot. My gr grandmother says she spotted one when it was busy and didn't notice her in time. There are stories of little green men called Injig guts. Perfect. Yeah. And the person says spelling is an approximate an approximation and somewhat phonetic. So, so maybe you nailed it actually. Yeah, Great. Who yeah. knows? In Inupiaq, if you are creeped out, scared, or the like, you would say Ijega. The E in the ge would waver in direct proportion to the level of fear or disgust, etc. Lost me. Yeah, hundred percent lost me. But if anybody's listening that understands that, please set us straight or tell us if this is correct. Or send in a voicemail and make the noise. Yeah, Ooh, that's give even us your better. Variations. <laughs> yep. Little scared, big scared. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, some some words are really hard to pronounce. Up, that's okay. Up here. If you just say them with confidence, mm -hmm. no one will know. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah, I believe you. So, all right. These creepy little guys, mischie mischievous little imps. Grandma would say that if you met one, all of a sudden you were supposed to spit in your hand, turn around with that hand behind your back, and get this. Let it lick the spit off your hands. God bless. I did not see that ending. <laughs> that is what they are looking for if they let you see them. Interesting. Okay, interesting because the Menehune of Hawaii, the tale, I was just there and um, local boy talking about it. And he said that if you run into them in the middle of the night, what you are supposed to do is strip naked and stand there and let them pass. And I made many a joke on it, naturally. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. Um, but just kind of one of those weird ones that makes you... So turns out they're perverts is what, yeah. is what, is what i'm hearing right Maybe, no, they, the, just, <laughs> they just walk past you they're like oh like what the hell is this guy doing? humans are ugly and then they just keep going yeah well like, he doesn't have any weapons yeah i don't know it's weird <laughs> yeah mm. <laughs> and minehunes are basically little people right in hawaii yeah they are and it's the same story they they live up in the mountains and and all of the hawaiian mountains have mass cave systems so it's the same same tales. The world's so crazy. Yeah. I love it. Or and think about think about Hawaii and um, the other islands down there, and where the first story um, in was it Indonesia area. Yep. But how isolated these areas are. And back in the day, when all of these stories started to originate, there was no form of mass com world communication. There was yeah. none. But all of them described the exact same little individuals. Interesting, too, because there's some people that believe the migration into the to the uh, all the islands that include Hawaii, all the mm -hmm. Tahitian islands came down through that area of Indonesia mm. and then went dispersed through the islands. Interesting. Including all the way down to Easter Island and, and also Australia, New Zealand, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So. All right. I have a I forgot why I titled it this, but it's a similar story. That's what What's you titled the it? title. Yeah. I you can't. titled it a similar story? Yeah, I can't remember why, though. It I was... feel like you really phoned that in, man. You should have given it three extra seconds. <laughs> three extra seconds. You're like, oh, never mind. I'll name it this. I'm hoping there's a reason I named it like that. I just don't remember it. I suspicion that it's going to be a similar story. Yeah, I feel yeah. that. Yeah, something tells me. Well, I'm going to let Dismal Streaks tell us if it's a similar story. Not ghost, but still weird. Heard a story from an older native Alaskan lady once who is no longer with us. At the time, she was on the upper side of 80, and this was around 2010-ish. She talked of a tribe of small people that lived in the tundra and would come to the village to trade. It was a regular and seasonal occurrence, so the townsfolk would put, put away the animals as they would lose their shit when the tundra folk came by. On this occasion, a dog came out and killed one of the little people, and they just never came back. After that, she said the village fell on hard times, and when she told the story, she insisted that it never actually recovered as though it had been cursed. 
Given her age and the time frames, I'd say this all happened pre-statehood and possibly in the midst of World War II. So that's why I added it, because it kind of gave a timeline to our earlier story. Yeah. But it seemed, I, I almost feel like that's too early. I feel like it would have happened longer, long, a long time ago. And because of maybe the oral traditions and, and not a lot of Europeans were here at the time, we didn't get the story till later. Well, that's kind of how I feel. Maybe, but also these villages that we talk about in Alaska, some have a road access, but such a very, very limited few. And I don't know if you guys have had the opportunity to go out to these villages, No, but if they're not on the roadway, they are as remote as you possibly could get and it's simple technology and getting these stories out wasn't a thing until more recent times especially right. if these people don't travel outside the yeah. villages but also you have to think about from their perspective when you meet somebody you, you especially when you're from different places you're excited to share the things that are unusual to you or to mm. them but when you're born and raised in these villages and you have very limited outside access to the world, you don't know what is weird or odd or unusual. So there are stories that are baffling like this that somebody wouldn't immediately tell you because right. they assume that you've experienced the same thing your yeah, entire life. That's you know? true. So her coming, maybe the what happened was she she came to what we would call like the city to Anchorage, what have you. And then people start asking questions and that's when those stories come out right. from the elders. Yeah. And that I would, think that for, would make a lot of sense. And I think for a long time, according to what a lot of people I've met up here have told me, Alaska natives, some of those stories weren't really, they, they weren't really supposed to talk about them or they weren't allowed to talk about their traditions and stuff like that for a long time in the state. I don't know if it's necessarily that, but Coming from Alaska being its own free with the indigenous people state to the very quick history, the Russians coming over and then um, the United States purchasing it and moving in and then the war and all of these things, there was some absolutely detrimental, very sad happenings to the native populace. And so I don't think that it wasn't it wasn't that they weren't supposed to share these tales. The the native culture in Alaska is very open. It is very sharing. It's so giving. You go and they they want you to be part of it. They want you to experience it. But could you imagine all of the, the, the just family trauma that they went through and all of the hardships that were caused by what is modern society? And so maybe they were a little more closed off, but I don't think at any point they've ever been told explicitly like you're not to share yeah it's that it's not like a secret or something yeah, yeah it's not like it's some wild secret it's you know they just didn't feel like sharing exactly mm, that makes sense but yeah. i know that some of some sometimes and this this is going back even farther before any of us were around but they weren't really allowed to speak their language in a lot of cases yeah. mm. especially you know back when the christian missionaries were here i'm not picking on your religion hey just, Ellen, don't worry i'm gonna lay off it's fine <laughs> yeah because yeah. that is factual that is the residential schools were a real thing whether it was yeah. with the russian language or with english yeah yeah we're not going to talk about what it says well we're going to say we're going to talk about did he see a fox this feels like the start of a Dr. Seuss book, and I guess I'm ready for it. This is from Old Lost Boy, B-O-I. I hallucinated a gnome crossing the road about 20 years ago on the drive down from Valdez. I swear I saw a little man in fur and skin clothes. Or Skin clothes? No, sorry. There's Wait a, a second here. There's a, hy there's a hyphen there that's throwing me off. I swear I saw a little man in fur skin clothes. He looked over his shoulder at me before going into the brush, left to right about 10 to 15 yards ahead on a bend. My wife heard me gasp and, and laughed at me, says it was a fox, multicolored. That does make more sense, but that's what he wants you to think. Mm. Yes. Think <laughs> about that. They, well, and that's interesting because they always say that sometimes they allow you to be seen. Maybe he was somehow either gifted the ability or had yeah. something that he still had the ability, right. you know, mm -hmm. to see. We've talked about that before on the show. I always say, like, cause I don't see anything par paranormal. Scott has. I'm like, maybe just certain people just aren't on that frequency and yeah. to see those type of things. Maybe I'll never see anything like that. But yeah. Scott would see, like I would see the Fox if we were driving and Scott would see the, yeah. the little person. Is there any 
in our neck of the woods, like Mojave, California City and shit like that, is there any in that Native American lore? Is there any like little people? I'm sure there is. I'll have to check on that for another episode. That's down in the desert of California. Because you remember that time I said that I was laying in bed and something jumped over my shoulder and ran out the door like lightning fast. And I thought it was a sloth, which did not make any sense. <laughs> to this day, I'm still like, it couldn't have been a sloth. Especially running. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's what I'm saying. It was so quick that the only thing my brain could pick up on was like, sloth? <laughs> Which is the worst first guess. <laughs> but, but yeah, I got up and I just like slammed the door shut. And I was like, what the fuck was that? I'm like, nah, it's got me thinking. I'm like, I'm, I don't know. If if we just go off the premise of where they live in the cave system, hmm. if you look all across the United States, we have a massive cave system. Yeah. And it starts in that area and then works its way across. And anywhere, if you were to look for missing persons hmm. that are never found again which Alaska has twice the national average in case people don't know. Mm -hmm. We have two times the national average and that's not per capita. We only have 700,000 people that live here in the state. We have two times the amount of missing people. Yeah. In the last 20 years, it's about 60,000 people. It's ridiculous how many. Wild. Mm -hmm. But if you follow and trace the missing people to the cave system, it yeah. is all of the hotspots are right on top. It yeah. almost mimics the cave shapes as they go. Yeah. Um, hmm. And that's something that I haven't heard of, but yeah. I've only heard of the folklore for Alaska. So I don't know. I saw something recently that was that exact thing, but it was like they put a map on top of a map and they're like, this is the missing persons report. And then this is the system. And you're like, it's the same. Yeah. Like perfect. If it, it's perfect. And you're like, I don't know. It's pretty weird. Man. So, if, so the caves are stealing people. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's where it is. I don't know if you guys heard back in. 2022 maybe so this was only two years ago i was on the slope at the time two gentlemen went out hiking or hunting from around like flow station two so maybe a hundred miles or so south of prudhoe bay they were out hunting for caribou they had gotten caribou the gentlemen had gone back to their tent and then went one of them went back to retrieve the caribou pile hmm. and just disappeared it wasn't far enough away for him to get lost it was in an area that was easy to walk back and forth to it isn't uncommon that a bear gets called in from a gunshot or can smell the decay of a body almost instantaneously but not only did the friend go and search the fbi came in the i believe it was the Marine Corps, or it was one of the larger military groups came in with their helicopters and Hill Corp, which is a mass entity on the slope, or allowed them to use one of their helicopters as well. They did all sorts of searching. The suns came up. Um, they did these different, I don't know what type of testing it is. They flew above with some sort of radar to do like ground penetration. It's like LIDAR, I think. LIDAR, well. I believe it was, and found nothing. Uh, cadaver dogs found nothing no blood hmm. absolutely nothing the local native villages all kind of laughed and said the same thing oh the little people took him like there yeah. was no evidence and the the friend passed a lie detector he didn't kill him he has no idea what happened to his friend just gone without a trace and everybody was so certain like well good luck finding him you will find nothing and hmm. if you keep searching specifically on foot the same thing might happen yeah that is that makes life in the woods a lot scarier to think about. And I, I hear a lot of stories that just are kind of, that I only hear like that in Alaska, mm -hmm. where like some of them are like, he was right there, like 10 feet yeah. away from me. I turned around, turned back, he was gone. Just gone. And, and we never found any trace. Yeah. No sound, no blood, no footprints, literally just from where they were to nothing. And those are the stories that I grew up on. Yeah. You know, yeah. and when you're little, you always... Like, I remember thinking like, oh, it has to be fake. They're just trying to keep us from um, being Wandering in the woods out. late or yeah. they're trying to keep us from being at the water's edge or right. they're trying mm. to keep us from whatever the wild story was. But now as I'm getting older and you hear those tales and then things keep happening, it mm -hmm. just makes you really, really think about it. Yeah. If you're that close to somebody, even if a bear is attacking, oh, you're going to know. You would, you would hear it. You would, and it's a messy way yeah. to go. It's, you would see something and there was, there was no clothing left there. His pack was still there. He had a gun on him. Yeah. Um, you know, and so it, it's just. All I remember is that one. And I think he was here in Alaska, the grizzly man guy. 
yes. that got yeah. killed. And I remember hearing just a snippet of that tape and it was like mm. gruesome. It, yeah. For those that don't know about that, mm. the grizzly man, as he referred to himself, he went out of Naknik, which is on the West Coast, and he went to where hundreds of I shouldn't say hundreds of thousands, but thousands of grizzly bears congregate every year to feed in these rivers out of Katmai area. Bad idea. And he decided he was one with the bears and he would get closer and closer and pretty soon was sleeping among them. For the most part, the bears were leaving him alone because they were fat and fed. Mm. No big deal. Well, he convinced his lovely girlfriend to go out with him and whether the pheromones or what have you, just someone different. Nobody knows exactly why the bear finally decided to react, but they were in their tent and while they were in there, they didn't have time to defend themselves and a bear came in and ate both of them and it was caught on video. Hmm. I didn't see the video. gruesome. I've only heard the audio. I went out and worked for a gentleman um, as a helicopter outrigger out of King Salmon, and he was the guy that dropped them off. And he told them, he said he knew immediately, he kept telling them, this is dumb, you shouldn't (laughs) be doing this. Um, And they didn't carry guns, anything like Mm. that, because the grizzly guy said, I'm one with the bears, I don't need to defend myself. And he then was... Um, this helicopter pilot was then the one that flew the troopers out to go mm. find the bear. And I saw the footage of them cutting it open and it was gruesome. Oof. Yep. Mm. And I, when I say the bears are each you, it was legs with a chunk of pants at the end and a whole <laughs> shoe on his foot still. Like oh. they don't chew. Yeah. They rip and swallow. Walk. Mm. So this, the hunters being out there and the theory that one was eaten by a, a yeah. bear, maybe no impossible. Yeah. For no DNA left. Yeah. It's absolutely mm. impossible. Yeah. And that's a that's mm-hmm. exactly why I brought that up because I remember hearing that and I was like, Oh, it gruesome. Yeah. 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 yeah like I said, I only heard the audio and I couldn't finish it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, moving on. Moving on. Gross. Mm. Welcome to Alaska. I know. Yeah. That's real life. The bears, meanwhile, he's like, They think he's one with us? <laughs> he has no idea. He smells yeah. funny. Where's yeah, they just sperm? waited for him to bring out the right snack and wow. The second they were hungry, they're like, all right, it's time to get rid of him. Ah, We've been waiting for him to bring his girlfriend. She looks (laughs) tasty. So sad. I know. I mean, we're making jokes of it. Yeah, Christian, how dare you? You got, you know, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that's something that I love about Alaska. We are brutal. Yeah. If you do something that is evidently stupid, if you go and play on the glacier and you fall through a crack, someone is going to make fun of you. Mm -hmm. If you're flying a bush plane and you're doing some stupid maneuvers, you're flying too low, you're doing something and you end up wrecking, we are going to make fun of you. Mm -hmm. If you go out and decide to sleep with the bears and one chews on you, of course, fault is that? Like Uh, you can't not make it just it. The nope. jokes Nobody's write like, he didn't deserve that. No. no, every single person. And I feel bad for the bear. The bear mm-hmm. shouldn't have died right. because of that guy. Because the guy put himself yeah. right in his mouth, basically. Yeah, he did. And um, there's a documentary about this guy. I can't remember the name, but if you guys want to see it. It's probably called Grizzly Man. I think it is. It's not the gentle Ben I grew up with. You guys know what that is? Yes. Or Grizzly Adams. Grizzly or Adams, Smokey yeah. the Bear. Let's get them all out there. You know? Okay. Well, let's let's move on. The word count at, of what I put in here is 6,000 and something. Oh, wow. my God. That's a novel. And that's why I ended up, okay, we're just going with Alaska today. We have to bring Morgan go. back again for the <laughs> other little people. <laughs> Open invitation, honestly. If there's something weird you want to talk about, yeah. we're always down. There's so many weird ones, like mm-hmm. like uh, Lake Iliamna. Oh, yeah. we will be Nessie, definitely... one of my favorites. All I've right. I've heard of the, the lake one. I've told you like, about it. Alaska it? has its own... Loch Ness. He did. I remember yeah. him phrasing a, a different mm-hmm. sentence. Very similar to that, though. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, you're invited back because these are things we want. We want to talk about some of this stuff, but you obviously know a lot about Alaska, so you that know helps more us. Than we do. So honestly, you should just take over the show. I think <laughs> we can say we, we can just get bait and just <laughs> hang on the yes. back. Are like what? Hey, this is Morgan <laughs> yeah. Lauren. Yeah. Freaky Deaky podcast. Yeah. Now you have Welcome two. In my guests. Yeah, you have a lot of work to do with two YouTube channels. <laughs> That's right. I can help. I do a little bit. <laughs> All right, this one's called The Trader, and it's from Character Juice 3148. Of course. They are very alien to behold. What I like about some of these stories is everybody telling their story is very confident mm. that it's true. They don't care about people like me that call themselves so called skeptics. Yeah. They're like, no, this is true. So it makes me believe it a little bit more. So they are very alien to behold. Very small, three feet at the most. Blunt nose, large round ears, hairy, but not fur. The one I got to know 
loved to trade, but had no sense of value. He probably thought the same thing about me. I met him fishing. Great story already, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect it to go. There. No sense of value. We couldn't communicate, but its name sounded like Mesh Moon. I just called him Mamoon. Wow. Disrespectful, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately he tells you <laughs> the yeah. name and you're like, mm, you're like mm, or Mamoon. Also, though, kind of sweet because he gave him like a fun uh, little, cool name. little yeah. name. Yeah. 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 So um, actually, maybe that's like yeah, awesome. We yeah. brought it back around. Good job. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good work there. They're incredible fast. I'm talking blink of an eye fast. It felt like he only moved when I blinked, but he could cover five to ten paces in that time. Wait, is that a human pace or his pace? Because I imagine that's like a human <laughs> his <laughs> little tiny feet, yeah. like five pieces. It's like one that sounds step. Sounds actually pretty if, right. Yeah. If we go by the the guy, who's the storyteller, and we take away the nice nickname thing, he's probably talking about human paces because yeah. that's all he thinks he could ambulate. But he used this blink mostly. It was very settling at first, unsettling at first. Oh, I was like, wow, really luring him in with that blink. Yep. Yeah. He really valued shiny things and fish and loved to hum songs. He liked fishing lures, bullets, coins, knives, necklaces, rings. He also liked matches, lighters, and beer. I mean, he's Just a boy. Just your average American so right there. <laughs> yeah. oh there he's, he's a boy little person, so obviously he's going to like all those, especially the fire. Oh, is that just me? That might just... No, I, if I can light something on fire, I'm going to. There you go. Okay. Yes. <laughs> he didn't care for cigarettes, and he would always hum a certain melody when he saw a fire. <laughs> just imagining now. Hold on, I'm sorry. He's getting this guy drunk. He's yeah, getting yeah. him addicted. Try this. Nicotine. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't care for it. Up yeah. next. <laughs> yeah, that's he's a, he's a true colonizer in that wow. that respect. Racist Christian. <laughs> Racist. He would always hum a certain melody when I lit when he saw fire. If I lit a smoke or started a fire, he would he would always hum the same tune. That would get annoying very quickly for me. I'd be like, bro, come to on. me that's fascinating because maybe that tune must mean something. Yeah. Like maybe it's a protection from the fire. Maybe it's in homage or in I mean, thanking the gods for possible. the fire. I mean, who knows? But yeah. it, it's connected. I just want to hear what the tune is. That's I'm very curious about that. I picture like almost like a is it a piccolo? Is it a what is that little? He's humming. Start singing that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Or you know your son hums all the time now, so maybe that's what it sounded like. Perhaps. He would bring me a bunch of old junk, bones, rusted cans, old peaches, old pieces of rotted leather, shredded plastic bags. He, he thought I would want it, I guess. I always accepted it graciously and would give him whatever coins I had in my pockets or something out of my tackle box and a few fish, fish of course. We would trade often over the course of one summer. One day he never came back to our spot. I left things out for him, but he never returned. My gifts would, would be there weeks later. It's been 40 years, and I've never seen one since. That, like, when I found that story, I'm like, this is weird. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's a good start. Yeah, and I'm like, but it's cool to, it would be cool to add in there because it's yeah. weird. Mm -hmm. But I like it. I like the idea because all of the stories I was told growing up were very, they were mischievous or curious. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it falls along that. And sure. the stories used to be told that they were not necessarily integrated within the villages and communities, but they played a part in, like, they were there. They were yeah. helpful. They were. They um, interacted with. It, yeah. They interacted. And it wasn't until things in modern times, they started to disassociate and are no longer or less likely to be seen unless we're hearing these stories of people being captured. So I I like the idea that maybe one of them kind of was going off and then one of the little people elders was like, where are you getting all these things? And found out what he was doing and said, yeah. you're not allowed to hang out with the big people anymore. Yeah, we yeah. told and, you about yeah, curious guy. Yeah, slapped him on the hand and said, no more. Yeah. It also reminds me of it, when you hear like indigenous Canadian stories mm. from back before Europeans were here and they talk about Bigfoot. Some of them were communicating with Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. They could talk to them. Sometimes Bigfoot was mean to some of them, but not always. They, they interacted and then all of a sudden it stopped. Yeah. And it makes me wonder if it's around the same time that something like this would have stopped when they would stop interacting with the native tribes yeah. because of some modern something that troubled them i mean it makes sense yeah realistically if i had the opportunity to hide in the woods and not talk to anybody again you know given modern times i would give up mm -hmm. all social medias i would do everything and i would just go 
find myself a nice little chunk of land mm-hmm. and hang out there. So that's the dream. I, I don't blame them. See, yeah. I'm not like, I have to have social socializing. I well, know. you get it in the form of you see a random hiker or hunter and you what? take them in for an extended Are you going to kill them? <laughs> yeah, I was like, where's the center? <laughs> hey, are we well, learning no, something I'm, new about you? You stab yeah. them. Yeah. Honestly, well, another fun fact about Alaska, don't know if you guys know this, if there's no body, there's no case. Mm-hmm. So That's great to know. Yeah, I, mean, I can no, even I admit heard to your murder and if they do not find your body, mm. there is no case. That but no, me. that's not what I was referring to. I was referring to the generosity or lack thereof of the little people keeping people and sometimes returning them. I'm just saying, if you lived in the woods and somebody walked by, you could invite them in for a short stint. Even if they were a little person. And then hold on to them. And hold on to them if you really liked yeah. their scent. Maybe. Scent. We do not condone violence toward it's people not violence visiting. Just holding this on isn't even violence. Nobody's I'm, attacking them. I'm suggesting okay. inviting them in for a warm cup of tea and maybe holding them hostage for a short while. <laughs> So you do need social socialization more than you're admitting. No, you were saying you want it. I'm saying oh, that's an option. So you're you. convincing you yeah. a game yeah. plan. Yeah. No, know. personally, myself, I I would happily, happily go the rest of my days mm. with the squirrels and the chipmunks and yeah. I like be a happy little clam. I, I have a bird, a camera f- feeder for my birds mm-hmm. where I live. So I get it, but I would only want to do it for a few months at a time, come back for a while. And then back, oh, yes, that's right. I don't like people. Yeah. <laughs> Head back to the woods now. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm the only one here that likes people. Oh, you man, might I, be. Yeah, I just need like a good puzzle. I'm fine. I'd have to take a lot of books. Well, you can do that. Yeah. We'll let you do that, Christian. Well, yeah, okay. you're allowed in this hypothetical <laughs> yeah. little in our cabin, solitude yeah, cabin. Yeah, we've decided. Okay, fair enough. Mm-hmm. So you guys think little people exist? Yes. I, know, I have a feeling you guys are going to both say yes. 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 I definitely think that they're, it's just too widespread. Mm-hmm. It's too worldwide. And like the, the stories that I was told growing up were just, they weren't told as stories. It was told as matter of fact. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to say I'm similar on this one to what I am with Bigfoot. We did it. I think it's very possible. Bigfoot, I still struggle to believe it exists in modern times, but I believe that it could have existed as much as, you know, even a hundred years ago. So if it could exist a hundred years ago, there's a chance it could exist now. And I would be the same with it's, it's little a beautiful people. Thing. It's a beautiful thing, Christian, honestly. Well, thank you. You've done this. You've done this. I can feel it. It's it's your doing. You know what? I think the little people did this mm. with allowing themselves to be seen enough to tell the tales. There exactly. Go. Yeah. There and you go. also, I'm afraid of them. I don't want them to take me. That's right. Yeah. You got to be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I will. I'll give them coins. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody that says, ah, oh, I don't believe in it. When they go out in the woods, especially if they come up here to Alaska, they go out in the woods and they don't, if they second guess for a second, just, it crosses their mind. You do believe mm-hmm. there, there's something in you that, yeah. that says, okay, it's maybe, like, oh. maybe they are out there. <laughs> yeah. And Alaska also, I, I grew up hunting in California. You come to Alaska and you're like, uh, this is, it's kind of scary out there. Yeah. Even if, even for people that live their whole life in Alaska, it's mm-hmm. It's dangerous in Alaska compared to any other state I've ever ever experienced or heard about. I mean, it's just so fast. Yep. The weather's so crazy. Even in the summer, it can get crazy. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just, it's easy up here to have bad things happen if you're not paying attention. Oh, so easy. Very easy. I've had friends come up from the States and you tell them it's fast. You tell them that if you want to never see a person ever again, you have the ability to do it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think people believe it until they actually come up. And I've seen so many times with my friends where we're driving from town to town, what seems like a quick <laughs> short drive to me, very normal, like three mm-hmm. hours between yeah. gas stations, not even towns. Mm-hmm. And you can see the fear on them. What happens if we break down? Yeah. What happens if, you know, where is everybody else? What do we do? And there's no cell phone service. And it's like, well, that's the point of living here. Yeah. But to those that have never experienced it, it can be very intimidating. Mm-hmm. And that's not even including the animals. Right. Or we have earthquakes and tsunamis and everything else in between. And little um, people, turns out. little people. Kushtaka. Kushtaka is a thing as well. That's right. Nope, Kustika, sorry. I'm sorry. You did it. You did it this time. I'm cutting mine out. I'm leaving yours in. Fair enough. <laughs> so next up is a little person expedition with Morgan. That's right. Oh, that would be so fun. We could uh, take the Freaky Deaky podcast on the road and uh, head out yeah. to some of these sites. See I what like happens. That. I do like that. Bring a little caribou meat, maybe. Mm-hmm. 
I, I would eat I've some. I've got some that. in my freezer, yeah. Heck yeah. Well, would you fly in a bush plane? Mm. I've been in small planes. I know you haven't. I might have been in one. I can't remember, though. Oh, you, you like would know. Yeah, that feels you like know, something you'd remember, you, right? You would immediately know. And again, people get intimidated by bush mm. planes. It's a very normal means of travel here in Alaska. It can be dangerous. Yeah. We have the most pl plane crashes in the country. But we also have the most plane owners yeah. and the most small plane flights. Yeah. So I feel like that kind of... It, Some experience there, maybe. Yeah. Well, these, it, these pilots can fly. I mean, they fly in crazy weather yes. and crazy places. And they crash sometimes. But, but it's part. It's, it's no yeah. different than getting <laughs> yeah. in a car. If mm -hmm. you you get in your car right now, mm -hmm. you are just as likely to get in a car crash as anybody else, whether it's your fault or somebody else's. And uh, it's really no different than mm -hmm. the bush planes. It's just kind of part of life up here. Yeah, you accept the consequences. I've been in one real like one two seater. It was great, and then I was in a smaller plane, not a bush plane, but when I was in Costa Rica, mm -hmm. I was in a really small plane. But they weren't that bad. It's just rougher, not as comfortable, and you're automatically going to fear more, but yeah, that's, well, that's part me of in general. Though. So yeah. it's fine. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I've only known one person that died in a plane crash up here. Yeah. Hmm. I know a few, but it is one of those things I've, I'm a big believer in like, okay, say my day to die. Eh, no, I decided it's not. So yeah. I'm not going to. So let, let the plane ride be bumpy. Let us have a scary crash landing. I don't care. I'm going to be mm -hmm. fine at the end of it. There you go. That's kind of how I was flying to and from the slope. I'm like, well, if yeah. I go, I go. <laughs> yeah, if it's my time. <laughs> but I decided it's not, so. Yeah. Even those big planes uh, landing on the slope were kind of scary sometimes. I believe it. Yeah, that sounds oh, horrifying. There's been a couple where the winds came in last second, and they call it crab walking when you go sideways, but it's on purpose. Yeah. And the mm. plane definitely did not do it on purpose. And when we landed, the pilot got off, and he was white, like ghostly white. Yeah. And he looked like he just shit himself. <laughs> and he I might mean, have. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it was one of those where... We're about to land. Plane goes completely sideways. I'm looking out at the runway yeah. through my window. Yeah. Okay. Like, hey, it looks like I'm, I'm thinking, flying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. No, thanks. I've taken off from there when I, we had, it, the weather was so bad. We had an escort, a loader taking it. We were, the bus was following a loader hmm. 30, 40 feet in front of us. You couldn't see it. And we still took off in that crap. I love that. But the taking off is the easy part. It's landing. I believe in that, that weather. Yeah. Yeah. That's too much. Alaska's wild. That's why they have a podcast called that. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I was going to throw that in there. If you want to see more of Morgan, she did Alaska Wild, just like us. Very nice yeah, segue. Was, I like that. Yeah. So very check it out. Very fun podcast. Yeah. Great guys. Great guys. They are. they are hilarious. And we were laughing through the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute blast. Great hockey players. Have fun with them. Check it out. And also, once you get your YouTube up, your new show, let us know. We'll share it with everybody. Hopefully, we'll have you on before then. We'll have, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Not, once, you, once you're ready to drop, start dropping stuff, make sure you come back on. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking. Probably, we're going to start filming here May. As soon as snow's up off the ground, we're going to start filming. Hopefully, start editing and getting the first episode out August, maybe mid-August, and we're going to be doing one episode a week. But in the meantime, there will be a bunch of shorts and other videos that aren't necessarily associated with the show, mm. but still super fun Alaska adventures. So. Definitely. And as everybody could tell, Morgan knows about Alaska, so you're going to want to check this out. <laughs> yeah. Stop watching those reality <laughs> TV shows that are completely fake that everybody in Alaska kind of laughs at. Oh, it's we do, but we everybody, really do. yeah, everybody else loves. Yeah, yeah. Watch the real thing. There's some guilty pleasures for all of us, Christian. That's okay. Yeah, we do. I've, I'm not gonna lie; like, I have my own too. But mm. same. Star Wars, unfortunately, same, same. <laughs> no. Well, is there somewhere you want to point people for the time being? Uh, Instagram or any, anything like that? You can, you can still follow you wherever you're at. Yeah, I'm super active on both my Facebook account and then my Instagram. I'm both are under the name Morgan Lauren Co. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that's any and all of my streaming is going to be under that handle. But um, yeah, I've been sharing some photos following along with the gold rush season and that just finally wrapped up. So I've been sharing some things that didn't make it into the show. Mm -hmm. There was so much behind the scenes. You know, those guys would be with us. The production company would be with us for 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And we'd only get maybe eight to 15 minutes of airtime a week. So our entire week would be crunched down into eight simple minutes yeah. that it just didn't even come close to scratching the surface on what we actually did, what we saw, how, you know, 
just all of the cool things that happen that go into the day to day of gold mining and being mm. in the wilderness. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm only on like episode 12. Yeah. Yeah. I started watching one. Nice. I was, I was surprisingly sucked into it. I'm like, huh. Yeah, it is. It's really easy to follow along and everybody mm. has a cool storyline. And that's what's awesome is that the, the reality is we are all individuals. We all have a story and stuff going on at home and yeah. sometimes that kind of spills over into the show because it can't not you know we have personal stuff going on but um yeah lots of history i think they're on season 14 yeah so it's followed parker from the time he was a teenager into a yeah into adulthood and that's pretty um, wild the empire that he's building right now and then yeah a few families in there as well so pretty cool yeah, fascinating stuff. We'll, we'll put the links in in the description. I'll, I'll try to remember to do that. Yeah. Christian, Christian, remind me to do that. You're going to be editing your own voice saying that. I don't need to remind you. Do you not listen to yourself you would ever? Think. Yeah, I'm. I'll Scott remind you that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Well, we really ap- appreciate you coming on. We've re- see, I you fucked up the ending. You fucking you fucked up the beginning. I fucked up the end. Damn it. Okay. We really appreciate you coming on, Morgan. Honestly, this has been fun, and I feel like I learned a lot, which doesn't usually happen on the show. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty rare, it turns out. Yeah. But, and we're going to do like a video too. So. Yeah. so head on over to YouTube. Well, you can head on over there if you don't find it. It means it's not out yet. I'm sorry. But It'll it's coming soon point. or yeah. it's already there. That's right. With, with more stories of little people. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. This has been an absolute blast. Yeah. Yeah. I love all of the Alaska folklore. So yeah. You're welcome back anytime to talk. Awesome. Seriously. Thank Alaska you. folklore Seriously. or Hawaiian folklore. Mm-hmm. Since you've spent some time there, yeah. or anywhere folklore, honestly, if you if you know what you're talking about, <laughs> I love free. folklore, so I talk about it all the time on this. Well, that pod. is, I hate when you call it a pod, but it's fine. It just I, sounds so unsincere. Like pod. check out the pod. Like now, it almost sounds like like we're better than people. You know, we are though. Oh well, there you go. Huh? Pod's back. No, pod's pod. back, we baby. are the yeah. pod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know how to end this. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>